Hello and welcome back to the shed. In today's video we're going to be restoring this chair here that we diagnosed. Hope you enjoy. The problem with this chair is, is that the whole thing is actually rocking. Now you've got to put quite a bit of weight on it. So if you look closely, just here, it's hard to get on camera but we have movement in this shoulder, we have movement in this shoulder. All of these tenon shoulders, we have movement. So we know for one, that the glue is no longer doing its job in holding these joints together. We know that it's a pinned mortise and tenon joint, which is a physical joint. And as I said before, if the glue is no longer doing its job, the only thing that I could see that could be causing that problem is if either the pin is broken or the tenon is broken. You've just got to kind of jump in with something like this, have the confidence to give it a go and uh, don't be afraid of stuffing it up. First of all, we need to come in the back here and remove that little block that's here, like this one just here, which is situated in here held with a couple of screws to support the base of the chair. So first thing is I'll go ahead and remove that and then we'll jump straight into trying to take these pins out. So now we've got that cross brace out. We're gonna have to remove this bracer down here. If there's any problem with that coming apart, you can try tapping it with a hammer. So let's go ahead and try that. It's moved a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead, tip this over and try and tap it back the other way because there might be a little more movement going back up that way. Also notice the hammer I'm using. It's one of these nylon hammers because I don't want it to mark it. If you're using a wooden hammer or a metal hammer, you could go ahead and use a little block so you don't damage your stretcher. So, we can see this is moving a little bit. But it doesn't want to come loose. So what I think has happened is that there's actually a little nail in here or something pinning that in place. So if we see here, which I missed in the last video, it looks like there's a little nail head down there. So what I'm going to have to do is chip some of that wood away to try and get that pin out first so we can safely remove this stretcher without damaging it. So you probably want to use a chisel that you don't mind having to resharpen or just a throwaway chisel. Just a shame that we've got to do this, which indicates that this was probably repaired at some point because it kept falling out. Just allowing me to grip it a little bit further down. And there we go. As you can see there, that nail's come out, so now we should be able to tap this rail out now. Next step here is to drill the dowels out on all the legs to take all the, the uh, mortise and tenon joints apart. This part is pretty much gonna stay intact and it's just the main leg assemblies that are going to come apart. So now we have those holders out of the way, dowels drilled out. We now need to try and tap these joints apart. Now, since these dowels have been drilled, it is possible that the drill has gone off, so it might not have 100% broken the dowel. So we've got to be a little bit careful, but if it does end up damaging the tenon, which I suspect is already damaged, we shouldn't have too many problems. So I'm gonna proceed by trying to tap these front two legs off towards me first. And we can break free. So we can see there's a little bit of damage here, but we can repair that. So that again then did a little bit of damage, so if any pieces like this do come off, make sure you hold on to them so we can put them back into place. Slowly just pair my way back to that with a nice sharp chisel. that down. 
device. So as you saw there, I marked the joints off with the painter's tape so I knew which joints went back where, took them all apart, repaired the joints, and then obviously glued and pinned them back together. Now if you'd like some more in-depth uh, knowledge of the process I used to repair uh, one of these tenons here, which happens to be this one right here in the front, uh, I'll leave a link below. I've got a video where I've just done that. So if you haven't already seen that video, I suggest you check it out if you're interested. The next step is to prepare this chair to take a stain. Now that involves giving the whole thing a good sand over, yes. Removing any little bits of old film finish, there's a few bits around the place. And yes, we'll be doing that as well. And then using a bit of filler to fill in any little voids and little gaps and little bits on the edge of the, the rails and anything that's sort of missing a little bit and I want to fill them back in to make the chair feel whole. So the filler I'm going to be using is this one here, it's called Timbermate. It's a water-based filler, but it's one that if it dries out you can just add more water to it and just make it pliable again so you can use it. And most importantly, it's a filler that won't harden and fall out. Now it's most important that you use a filler that won't harden and fall out when you're doing it for this sort of a use because you don't want it falling out at a later date. <laughs> So now we've finished putting the putty on, we need to go around with some 240 grit sandpaper, sand and smooth out any of this putty that was put on the edges here to make it all rounded and shaped the way it's meant to.
we're now ready to give the chair a clean before applying a stain. Now, in this case, I'm using a walnut stain. If you weren't going to stain it, then obviously you probably wouldn't have done this filler stage. And I'm going to be using this Feast Watson Proof Tint Traditional Stain in Walnut. I will be having to wear a respirator for this. What I'm not going to be doing is sealing the grain on this one because although I could get away with putting probably just one coat of stain on, I want the stain to actually soak into the timber so you can see some of the timber grain through the stain. And I also want to make it um, that if the chair does take a few knocks that you're not going to have the light colored timber showing through. So I'm probably going to apply two, two coats of this particular stain. So now the stain's been applied, it's dried overnight. We're now going to apply a film finish over the top of this. Now the finish I'm going to be using is shellac. I'm going to start with one coat of two pound shellac, which is just thicker. Then I'm going to move on to probably one or two coats of one pound shellac over the top of that. I've left this shellac for an entire day to make sure it's nice and hard before we move on to the next step. Now, that next step involves using 4 knot steel wool. I use the Sifter brand, uh, you can use whatever brand you can find, but 4 knot is important if you want a really fine steel wool if you're going to use steel wool. Or you can find a really fine uh, scotch bright pad. I believe it's the grey ones or the white ones that are really fine. Uh, you'll have to check out how that compares in terms of grid. And then I'm going to use my homemade paste wax that I've got here and I'm going to use the steel wool with the paste wax and rub the entire surface over. Now what that's going to do is cut back on the shine a little bit, make it a little duller but it's also going to even out the shellac that's on here and leave a nice sort of uh, smooth to the touch finish. If you haven't seen my video on making your own paste wax I'll leave that link below so you can check that out if you need to. So it's simple, just grabbing a little bit of steel wool like this. You don't want too much paste wax on here. And then it's just a process of sort of just rubbing the surface over, just like that. What I've got here is a horsehair brush. Now, if you don't have a horsehair brush, you can just use a microfiber cloth, but the horsehair brush actually does a really good job at sort of buffing out the paste wax and leaving that smooth surface. So what I do is I buff it out with the brush first and then come back in with a clean cloth and just wipe over the top of that and that's the final polishing done. Just as simple as just rubbing over all the surfaces and. You get quite a workout doing this. You just want to get quite a bit of movement into the brush and it just levels it all out and, and gives a little bit of a sheen to that paste wax. Now that we've wiped this chair all over, um, you can see that it's not quite as shiny as it was. It's more of a dull sheen. The next step is to go ahead and put these back in. Now I didn't stain these on purpose because the base of the chair is going to sit on them. 
So all I'm going to do is screw these corner pieces back in. Probably put new screws in with them because the screws that I took out, some of them snapped. I think now that that's in, it's a good spot to stop the video for now. Uh, it's getting a little too long, so I'll split this into two videos. And in the next week's video, or the next part of this video, I'll go ahead and fit a base in here to rest on these uh, little rest stops here. I'll show you how to cut it to size and get it right, and then we'll upholster that base. So stay tuned for that video. So I hope this video gives you some idea of how to take apart a mortise and tenon chair and reassemble it and then stain it and refinish it and prepare it all to the stage where we can now reupholster and put the base in. And this is the exciting part where the chair starts to actually finally come together and all your hard work is realized once it's all complete. So if you like this video and you'd like to see some more videos like this restoration here, please check out the video just down here. And if you'd uh, like to continue to support me, please consider pledging on Patreon. Bye for now.